Oh, alrighty. So just to double check, I can go ahead and start sharing the screen. I want to welcome everyone to the Texas Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. My name is Jasmine. I'm going to serve as your facilitator. Again, thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are muted, so we are unable to see or hear you. This is just one of numerous sessions that we're offering, so feel free to register for additional sessions. And finally, this presentation is being recorded. Um, so within about a week or so, you can go back to our registration site and access the recording. With that said, I would now like to turn it over to our amazing presenters for tonight. Our first presenter is the University of Texas at El Paso. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everybody. Let me start sharing my screen that we can get everything started and then I'll provide more information. All righty, perfect. So let me start off by introducing myself. My name is Mario Arnal. I'm one of the admission counselors with UTEP Admissions. And this, we have prepared a quick presentation to give you a quick overview and some details about what would be the process if you decide to become a UTEP minor. Like they mentioned, there will be a Q&A session. That way I can also stay behind and answer any additional concerns you may have. Okay, as a quick overview, right now UTEP has more than 25,000 students. Take into consideration that back when we started back in 1914, there were only 27 students. So we've come a long way. In regards to the alumni, we have a little combination, not only from within the state or across the country, but also worldwide. We have many good relations with different countries, for example, Mexico and also the Kingdom of Bhutan. That's why we really like to showcase the alumni diversity that we forecast. Every time you talk to an institution, there's many things that each one of them are really proud of. One of the things they're really proud of is we're ranked number one in national um, mobility, uh, social mobility and nationally a uh, leader in research. But what does that mean, right? Social mobility, um, that's one of the students come from different places. Once again, considering we're a border region, we're right next to Ciudad Juarez in Mexico. Uh, many uh, students come from different countries um, throughout the state and also neighboring states. And for the research, this is one of the ones that also we really proud to, to share with you guys. We're really proud to have the R1 recognition. But what does that mean, right? That, that, that's what it means, the uh, Carnegie uh, recognition for research. We're one of 130 universities among the, um, the country, that's 4.5% uh, that has this recognition. They take into consideration funding that we provide, the facilities, the professors, and the opportunities. Because if, if, whether you're interested in doing engineering or nursing or political science, with us, you can start doing your research run, right from your freshman year. Take into consideration that's one of 130, and there's more than 2,800 in the country. So that's something you're really looking forward to doing. This is something that you can also get some more information about. Either you already know what you want to study or you're a little confused. For example, when I was a freshman, I started doing biology and chemistry. I later discovered that I wanted to do business and political science. So you have plenty of room and plenty of options to choose from, as you can see from bachelors all the way to PhDs. And of course, we have different colleges, business, education, engineering. We have the more recent one, nursing and pharmacy. So you have different, uh, different colleges. What I did, I combined college level arts with a college of business administration and made a little, I complemented them with their degree plan. So that's also something that you're interested in doing. You can talk to your uh, academic advisor and make that happen. A quick overview of the topics we'll be discussing, admissions, financial aid, and also the new student orientation. So the first step to apply would be the application itself, right? You would go to applytexas.org. And if you're familiar with this website, because maybe you already submitted another application before, you would just use the username and password. In case you haven't, just create the account. Pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Every time I'm talking to students in regards of what do you want to go to college or what do you want to choose to attend, I think there's three components. One of them is 
that you like the university, that you like the space, that you like how it feels. Second, that they offer you a degree plan. Uh, when I was in high school, I was contemplating cer uh, certain universities, but they were not offering the degree plan I was looking for. So that's really important. And third would be finances. This would be just an estimate. It would be an annual average cost that we can use in comparison in regards of how much it would be, how much you're expecting to pay out of pocket. And of course, you also have the financial aid application and scholarships you may apply for. Of course, here we have the financial aid. And in, in, if you're interested in attending UTEP, you can enter this code. That way we can receive your information and prepare the package for you. Whether you're out of state, out of the city, or here in El Paso, you can apply to live on campus. We have different facilities, Grand Canyon, Heights, and Village. One is inside the campus, one almost like one block away, and another one is like right outside of it. You may consider the benefits of staying on campus. And something actually I didn't know um, until we started doing this presentation is half of the residents that we have at the campus are from El Paso area. I would expect them from me to be from out of, state, out, out of state or outside of the country, but 50% are from here, from the same city. So that kind of gives you a, an idea of all the benefits and the convenience of staying on campus. Once you submit the application and you will receive your documentation, which would be, for example, from high schools, would be the application, your high school transcript, and your scores, these guys, they're so helpful, student orientation. They'll guide you through the process of advising, uh, registration for classes. They give you all the tools and all the information you need to be able to continue and start your semester. I'll go ahead and include a point of contact. And I know the presentation will also expect in other presenters. So I'll stop sharing my screen. That way we can also continue with the program. But I'll stay behind you because you have you guys have any questions. Thank you, University of Texas at El Paso. Up next, we have the University of Texas at Permian Basin. Hello, everybody. Let me get my PowerPoint up here. Um, so I am the Assistant Director of Admissions here at UTPB. So I'm just going to go through some uh, brief information for you guys uh, to learn a little bit more. So we are located in Odessa, Texas, which is in a very rural area. Just think of oil field, desert, basically, you know, just very uh, hot and arid. Um, so we're like, if you see Texas, that 90 degree angle, we're like right here. Um, so we service a lot of students um, and other schools in the Permian Basin area, which goes about 150 mile radius, um, maybe even 200 miles. So um, as the name states, we are part of the UT system. So a lot of people think UT Austin, UT Tyler, UT RGB, UTEP, UT Dallas, UT Arlington, and all those schools. Um, however, we are the smallest UT school. We are really, really small compared to the other schools that are uh, presenting today. We have about 6,000 students on campus. So our faculty to or student to faculty ratio is relatively small as well. You're only going to have about 23 to 25 students in your classrooms. Uh, we do have division two sports. We are part of the Lone Star Conference and we offer about 38 undergraduate majors. Um, and as I mentioned, we are in rural West Texas, so we service a lot of schools within a 200 mile radius. And this is an aerial view of our beautiful campus. Again, we have a really small campus. So this is, this is the main campus that you see here. Those are the four main buildings that we're seeing. Um, and then if you look at the very back, you'll see our dorms are located back there. So everything is really close and within walking distance. Um, we also do have a Midland campus, which is about seven miles out of town, and it's really close to the Midland International Airport, which is really convenient for students who are not from this area and need a quick flight to get home. So there are direct flights, I believe, to Dallas and to um, uh, Houston, which is convenient for a lot of students. So our Midland campus has our Wagner Noel Performing Arts Center for our music students our engineering building for engineering, and then our seed building, which is our former engineering building, but is now used as additional classroom space. This is our student housing. So we have two different types of housing. We have a residence and dining hall, which is just for freshmen, which comes with two different options. There's a double occupancy where you share a room with somebody, or there's the four people dorm where everybody has their own room. And then the apartment style is 
everybody does get their own room in those, but they come fully furnished with like the a full size kitchen and living room. Um, and if you see the picture of Freddie the Falcon there in the living room, that's kind of what the, the apartment styles look like. And they do all come fully furnished. Um, you don't have to bring a bed or a dresser or anything like that. And then the kitchens have all the appliances as well. And this is a list of our academic majors. We offer um, under the College of Arts and Sciences, College of Health Services and Human Performance, College of Business, College of Engineering, and College of Education. We do have a couple of pre-professional programs, which includes pre-med or pre-PT, as well as pre-law. And then we have our Apply Texas uh, application process. So our application will be available there, applytexas.org. All you need to do is just make sure you fill out the correct application, fill it out as much as you can. And then we also do have a $40 application fee. However, if you qualify for one of our waivers, then you won't have to pay that $40. Once you've submitted your application, we just ask that you send in your official high school transcript. And we are test optional this year for fall 2021. So if you are a senior um, watching right now, we are accepting SAT or ACT scores, but they are not required. So if you have taken it, feel free to send it in. Um, but what we'll do is if the scores help you, then we'll definitely use it to your advantage. But if the scores are not so great, then we'll essentially just ignore them um, and just go solely based off of your high school information. And then if you've taken any dual credit classes, feel free to send in your, your uh, college transcript as well. So our freshman admissions requirements, top 25% students are automatically admitted, no matter your GPA, SAT, ACT scores, they, you will be admitted. Um, for any student who falls below that, it is a holistic review where we look at your high school class rank, your unweighted uh, 4.0 GPA. And if there is any other additional information, you're welcome to send that in, such as recommendation letters, essays, a resume, or anything like that. We don't ask for those documents, but you know, for some students, those supporting documents do help for their admissions process. And these are our scholarships, anywhere from 500 a year to 10,225 a year. And those are automatically awarded. The top four are automatically awarded based on your GPA. And the presidential slash presidential plus uh, does have a hard deadline of March 1st, and that is by an application process. And so basically, if you apply and we determine that you're eligible for one of these scholarships, you don't have to accept it. We just automatically award it to you. This is our annual cost of attendance, which includes our tuition and fees, room and board, meal plan, and estimated cost for books and supplies. And this is for the in-state uh, tuition. Um, if you are an out-of-state or an international student, feel free to contact me and I can get you the correct information on that. But as you can see, we uh, are right at around 20,000 a year for students. All right, and if you do have any questions, here is our contact information. Um, we also do have a virtual tour and our Falcon Day on our website if you would like to come look at our campus. Um, we are encouraging you to do that as well. So if you do have any questions, feel free to contact admissions or me directly. Thank you so much. Thank you. Up next, we have the University of Texas at Tyler. My name is Adolfo Florio, Michigan University of Texas. I'm going to be sharing a quick PowerPoint with you guys. To open it up. Okay. Success is not one size fits all. We all have diverse objectives and different goals that drive us. No matter how you define success, there's one common ingredient that brings it about. Passion. See, passion helps us overcome obstacles. Passion inspires innovative ideas. Passion fuels tireless work. Whether you're a first-generation college student, you want to lift up your community, or you're someone who has an idea to change the world, we are here to power your success. With the core of University of Texas excellence wrapped in a caring community, your achievement is what drives us. 
the University of Texas at Tyler. Your success, our passion. So just to start off with the admissions for this semester and possibly some upcoming semesters, um, you know, for top 25%, you are not required to have any minimum GPA. Um, and then if you fall under the second, third, fourth quartile, we do require 2.75 uh, GPA. Um, and we're not currently accepting, or I wouldn't say accepting, requiring um, ACT or SAT scores. Um, if you do have them, you can send them in and they might be beneficial to you for TSI purposes. But as far as admissions purposes, um, you are by no means required to send them in. Um, but if you do you know, happen to take them or if you already took them, you're more than uh, welcome to go ahead and send those in. Uh, some of our scholarships, um, unfortunately, these two have already passed the Presidential Fellows, our full ride scholarship. The deadline was December 1st and the Patriot Scholarship. That one was uh, deadline is March 1st and that one is one to five thousand um, dollars. This scholarship, the Academic Excellence Scholarship, is actually our open one. Um, the deadline is uh, not until May 1st and is in the amount of two thousand um, dollars. And to be eligible for this scholarship, you have to be ranked within the top 25 percent of your graduating class with at least a 3.0 GPA. Um, and then if your school doesn't rank or they only rank the top 10 percent, whatever it might be, or if you're homeschooled, then it would only require you to have a 3.5 GPA um, and that would still qualify you for the scholarship. So all documents are required no later than May 1st and it is a funding, uh, funding is limited on this scholarship. So it's a first come first serve basis. Uh, so we kind of try to focus mainly on three things here at University of Texas at Tyler, one of them being research, the other community and lastly tradition. So by research, we do have a lot of research opportunities, not only um, you know, for our engineering department, but also our pharmacy department. You can actually get your um, doctoral degree in pharmacy here at University of Texas at Tyler. We do have a fast track program. So where you come in as a freshman and you stick with the program all throughout the six years and end up getting your doctorate in pharmacy. So they do a lot of great uh, research. Currently, I believe they're doing research on cancer for uh, kids. So they're doing a lot of research on that right now. And then the civil engineering department is always doing research. Um, I think they're currently doing some structural design research, um, water treatment research, a lot of different things um, are going to be being doing, uh, done here at the University of Texas Tyler through our civil engineering program. And then also on the right hand side of the screen, you see a lot of people gathered around. Um, that is our research conference and competition. So we have a research conference and competition every semester for students. Um, and those happen, you know, for students, faculty, and staff, they want to get in. Um, and it's just kind of like a fun competition for students to, you know, not only research for class purposes, maybe your professor might require it, but also, you know, if you just happen to have an idea and you want to showcase it, um, that'll probably be a good option for you to do. Um, so our academics, 19 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So that's kind of most likely what you'll see in the junior, senior year. Um, freshman, sophomore level courses is where you'll see probably more students just because they might be taking core, core courses and that's where pretty much all students are going to be. But once you get into those concentration courses of your major, that's when you can start seeing the 19 to 1 student to faculty ratio. Uh, so we have a lot of academic support. We have a tutoring center. We have a writing center. Um, we constantly have uh, TAs having, you know, extra classes available for you if you're struggling. Um, Hands-on learning, especially in a nursing department, we have a simulation lab where it's actually a pretty much real life hospital. It can be turned into a real life hospital in the event of a natural disaster. Um, but currently right now they do have dummy patients in there and those dummy patients um, help our nurses become you know, better equipped to handle real world situations. Um, those dummy patients do you know, have certain symptoms that you have to treat. You know, they can do anything from sweat, do anything from um, you know, throw up, do anything from need an injection, do anything from tell you they're having a fever, having a cough, whatever it might be. Um, so it's a really good feedback system for you. So you, that way, you know, if you were to make any mistakes, you know, we'd rather you make the mistakes, you know, with the dummy patient than a real one. And then, of course, we do have more than 80 fields of study. Um, and then I would say about 10 of those would be um, master's degree levels and then a couple of doctoral degrees as well. So community, University of Texas at Tyler is really um, hands-on in the community. We do have a food pantry on campus. And what that food pantry is, is that we allow students to come in 
um, anytime throughout the year, you know, might be, you know, running low on money, running low on supplies, or whatever it might be. They can come to the food pantry and pick up whatever they need, no, uh, no questions asked. Um, and in the middle, you see the nursing right there. Um, so currently we're experiencing a nursing shortage in Texas. So we've added 200 new uh, spots open to our nursing students in our nursing department. So that's kind of what we're trying to do to kind of help reduce that nursing shortage in Texas. And then of course, on the right hand side, we do have our biology lake. We do a bunch of research on that. And not necessarily just for UT Tyler, but also for the community, um, you know, doing different um, samples of you know trying to see what happens if you introduce a certain species into the lake into the pond um if you introduce certain chemicals if you you know certain amount of pollution what it does so there's a lot of research opportunities especially for you know those biology students campus life so there's we have nearly 100 clubs and programs ranging from you know athletic intramural sports programs to you know academic clubs um, a lot of academic clubs do help you um eventually transition into the real world because they are professors and they are, you know, these people who have experience in the field who are kind of those mentors of the groups. Um, they do offer a lot of internships as well. Um, I know especially the accounting program, um, a lot of students end up getting internships through that um, uh, club, the accounting club. Uh, so we do have a lot of community service and leadership as well. We are division two athletics. Um, currently we were division three last year and now we moved up to do Division two, so that's good. And then, of course, the city of Tyler. Now, Tyler, Texas is in East Texas, kind of the heart of East Texas. Um, just beautiful nature centric campus. Um, if you're looking to have, you know, a nature vibe, you know, we do also have two lakes on campus, and one of those is the Bology Lake, but the other one is the kind of, you know, recreational lake. So you can go in there swimming, you can go fishing, canoeing, kayaking, whatever it might be. Um, it's kind of all around nature vibe that we have going at UT Tyler. And housing. So Ornelas Hall is kind of like that cliche um, dorm style complex that you might see in movies, TV shows. Um, and then all the other ones are going to be apartment complexes. That'll be Patriot Village, Every Landing, Victory Village, and U Pines. So U Pines is kind of a third party um, partner with us. And then Every Landing is kind of the junior senior level um, where most of those students stay. And then of course we do have our dining. We now have three Starbuckses. Uh, of course our med cafeteria is kind of a buffet, a uh, soup and go convenience store, kind of a gas station without the gas, and then five restaurants that include Subway, Chick-fil-A. So we do have a lot of tradition here at UT Tyler as well. You know, our baseball is probably our most um, influential and you know biggest sport we have at UT Tyler. They you know are constantly winning national titles. So there were a big reason why we moved up from division three. To Division Two, and they're currently doing really well in the conference Division Two with Division Three athletes. So that's pretty good. And then of course, on the right hand side, we have our soup camp. Um, that's kind of for something for uh, freshmen. It is not necessarily um, required, but it is kind of a good opportunity for you to come and meet students and teachers before orientation. Um, so in the middle is our Holy Festival. That is something that our Indian Student Association kind of does. And it's a very you know fun atmosphere that you know not just if you're um, in the Indian Student Association, but a lot of people, you know, come together and celebrate their culture. A Patriot Spirit, so we do have a lot of different things we do. So what you see right here in this picture is like the lake. Um, it's what students usually do during orientation. You know, at the end of orientation, after you've, you know, met everybody, you know, met with your academic advisor, done a bunch of um, meetings with, you know, different organizations or clubs, and that's where you end up just, you know, going around lining the lake, and then we have, you know, some barbecue, whatever it might be as well. And up next, we have Texas A&M. Howdy, let me share my screen real quick. Okay, perfect. Howdy, my name is Sarah Peacock and I'm a regional advisor with Texas A&M University. I work with students in the Austin area as well as West Texas, um, but we have regional advisors all over the state of Texas. Um, David, would you like to introduce yourself real quick as well? Sure, my name is David Schwartz. I'm one of the senior members of the admissions crew. Uh, I've been doing admissions for the last 15 years and I'm still going strong and Texas A&M wants to have you come to our university, see for yourself what it's all about. 
So okay. Thanks, David. And we're going to run through this information super quickly, but if you all have questions, please feel free to put them in the Q&A. Uh, but we first wanted to highlight Texas A&M and our culture because we do feel like it's very distinctive. Um, we're most known for our traditions and for our Aggie core values, which can be summed up in the acronym RELIS. It's respect, excellence, leadership, loyalty, integrity, and selfless service. Um, you can see a picture on your screen of something that we call the big event that happens every single year in April. Um, it's the largest student-led day of service in the country, and it actually has spread to several other universities, but originated here at Texas A&M. Um, that's just a day where we can go out and serve the local community. We have tons of other events. I could give examples for each one of those letters in the acronym RELIS, but we don't have that much time tonight, unfortunately, so we're going to keep going, um, but it's something I love to highlight about our university because I think it shows how much we love to give back to our community. Other things, we are the first public institution of higher learning in the state of Texas. We opened our doors in October 4th of 1876. Um, we'll see on the next slide that we are a very large university, but even at such a large school, we still do a great job of having a very low student to teacher ratio. So for every 20 students on our campus, we do have at least one faculty member. Um, and additionally, we have a really great first year student retention rate. So every single year we're returning about 93% of our students um, who come to Texas A&M. As I said, we are a very large university. We are currently the largest university in the country with over 69,000 students. Um, they're not all in College Station with us. Our undergraduate population is going to be a bit lower, um, between 40 to 45,000 students, depending on the year. Our freshman class size is typically around 10,000 students. Um, from those 10,000, about 20% or one in five are first generation college students, meaning their parents did not earn a bachelor's degree. Um, so we do have tons of resources on our campus campus for students who are first generation academically, socially, and all of that. Um, additionally, we award every single year to our freshman class over $129 million in financial aid, which we're really proud of as well. Um, we do have over 130 undergraduate degrees that we offer spread across 10 different academic colleges. All of our majors, with the exception of the College of Engineering, are first come, first serve. So when you're applying, we always encourage you to apply earlier rather than later to make sure you're getting into that major that you're looking for. Um, students who apply for engineering are reviewed holistically for that program, which David will talk about in just a few minutes. Um, we're most known probably for our veterinary school. We are um, currently, I think, number one in Texas, number four in the country for vet school. We also have a great engineering school and a business school, um, but as you can see, we we have over 130 different majors to choose from, all of which um, have great reputations. Other things um, on our campus, this says 1,000. It's probably closer to 1,200 student organizations that we have on our campus, which range from service things like the big event that I talked about before, to leadership organizations, pre-professional societies, traditions-based organizations, Greek life, athletics, and more. Um, so I always like to say at Texas A&M, there's probably a spot for you. We probably have what you want academically, and there's most certainly a spot for you socially as well. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Dave, and he's going to talk a little bit more about the admissions process here at Texas A&M. All righty. Kind of a rundown of the application process. We open our applications on August 1st. It will be the same way next coming year. We also are, you need to understand that we are uh, test not required. And so if you decide to take the test, we'd love to see the scores, but it's all optional. Um, all of the paperwork needs to be in no later than December the 15th. Uh, the Texas A&M priority date for financial aid is to have our students FAFSAs into the university by December 15th. Uh, of course, the acceptance date is May 1st. We call that the signing day. And the last thing that our students need to provide to us is a transcript that shows their work after they graduate their entire high school program. So um, going on a little bit further, a, a student's got to be at a recognized public or private high school uh, in Texas and be in the top 10% of that a senior class to be eligible for an automatic admissions to top to Texas A&M University. Um, you have to have all of your requirements in, you have to meet the admissions deadline, 
You have to meet the, the uh, Texas Uniform Admissions Policy, and you must graduate under the foundation curriculum and distinguished level of achievement. All of that will give you an automatic admissions to Texas 7 a and uh, One of the folks that talked a little bit earlier talked about rolling admissions. And that really is what Texas A&M is because every other student that's not in the top 10% will go on to what we call holistic review. And this is where we're going to take a look at a lot of different things. We're gonna take a look at your academic achievements, what you've done in high school. We will look at SAT and ACT scores if you provide them. But as it was mentioned earlier by one of the other schools, it can help you sometimes, but it will not be used against you in the decision process. They're gonna look at personal achievement, what you've done, what kind of organization, what kind of community service. Did you work? Did you have some kind of special honors or achievements that were related to academics or your school? And then the other thing we're going to take a look at is unique things. These may be hardships, they may be awards, um, they may be a large variety of things, but our recruiters look through all of those things to see how well you have done. And what we're really looking for is those core values that was put up earlier that Sarah talked about, because that's what we're looking for. Texas A&M is known for building leaders, and those leaders are going to have those qualities at Texas A&M University. All right. That's about it. But I would like to say a couple of things. One, I'd like to say that we would love to have you come out to the campus. And if you contact our visitor center by going to visit.tamu.edu, the visitor center will be glad to help you come out and visit the campus in person. Um, yes, there are restrictions because of the number of students we have but you're always welcome to come to the university. I heard a lot of other things that we're talking about, and I'd love to talk to you all night about this, but I've got to be honest with you. We've got 144 years of experience under our belt. And I think that we have, uh, what we have to give a student is a college that is built for the student. We want you to come in, get a world-class education, and graduate four years later to go on to graduate school, to go on to the military, to go into the business community. But that's what Texas A&M is all about. It's all about the student and the academics. And we want you to come and see Texas A&M as soon as you can. Thank you, Texas A&M. Up next, we have Texas Tech. Hey, everybody. Thank you all for uh, joining us today. I'm Taylor Chilcott. I'm with Texas Tech University. And uh, let's get rolling because it's six minutes and it's a quick six minutes. So let's head back out to West Texas. So a little bit about Texas Tech. We are 40,322 students on our main campus. You can see part of the main campus in the picture behind me. That does include our graduate, undergraduate, our health sciences center, and our law school, which is part of that main campus. Our main campus is 1,800 acres. So it does not all fit in that photo there, but you can kind of get an idea. We do have a 20 to one student to teacher ratio. Of course, uh, like everybody else that's in here, some of your freshman classes or your new first year classes may be a little bit larger, but when you get to your upper level classes, you're gonna have some of those smaller class sizes. We are a diversity champion. So we are a Hispanic serving institution. So we really wanna represent state of Texas and the Texas population. So something we're really proud about. We too are also a tier one research institution. Again, we're, there's only 130 of those in the United States. Uh, so we are one of those that's only 94 public schools in the country. So really excited to be a part of that. And then you can see our average SAT last year, or I guess two years ago now, the fall of 19 was 1171. We're gonna talk a little bit about uh, test optional and stuff here in a few minutes. So if you're wondering where Lubbock, Texas is, we are in West Texas. We're in the South Plains. So just the Southern part of the Panhandle. Uh, the city of Lubbock is over 250,000 residents. Lubbock wouldn't be there without Texas Tech. And I don't think Texas Tech would be there without Lubbock. We go hand in hand in the West Texas hospitality. It is a big city and it's a smaller scale. So it has everything a big city has, but at a smaller scale. 
unique to us is over 78% of our students do come from over 300 miles away. So we're very much a residential campus. Our new first time students do have to live on campus your first year. And then that kind of creates that residential environment across the campus. The city itself does have over 75 parks and venues. We have more park space, uh, more parks per capita than any city in Texas, as well as more live uh, entertainment venues than any city uh, in the state of Texas. And we do have an international airport. So you can fly in from Houston, Austin, or Dallas uh, to get there. On our main campus, we do have 10 academic colleges that represent over 150 majors and minors. As I mentioned, we do have the Texas Tech School of Law on the main campus of Texas Tech University, as well as the Texas Tech Health Sciences Center. Our Health Sciences Center is a comprehensive medical center that is connected to our university medical center, which is a level one trauma unit. So we actually have the county hospital on our, uh, on our uh, property or on the Texas Tech campus. But the Health Sciences Center is medical, it's nursing, it's pharmacy, it's uh, physical therapy, occupational ther therapy, physician assistant. It is um, running hospitals, so health, uh, health professions. Uh, I may be missing something, but again, comprehensive. And then starting this fall, we're really excited. We are going to be the second vet school in the state of Texas, the first one in Texas in over 100 years, and only the 33rd in the United States uh, will be starting fall 2021. They had just wrapped up their interviews for that, so really excited to bring that to West Texas. A little bit about the Texas Tech community. We have over 150 majors, or I mean, sorry, over 550 student organizations on our campus with over 19 residence halls. Again, I did mention that all new first time students are required to live on campus their first year. You can see some residence halls back past our Lazy River there. We have over 30 plus dining venues, you name it. We've got some type of food for it, including a food truck, um, but all of our major buildings on campus do have some type of food service. We have three or four Chick-fil-A's now. We have a full service Chick-fil-A. We've got Starbucks, Fazoli's, uh, we have Sabaro Pizza, um, Egg Quiznos, just to name a few. With the, you do see our Lazy River in the photo there. That is part of our rec center. Um, pretty typical to most large campuses. You're going to see a lot of rec center and things like that. We really want our students to enjoy their time outside of the classroom. Uh, one thing you'll always learn touring colleges and stuff, you're going to do the best in the classroom where you're happy where you're at. And we want to make sure we provide that for our students. We are part of the Big 12 Athletics. Uh, we are in Division One Athletics. All of our students that are full time, you actually have uh, access to all of the home sporting events. It's part of your tuition and fees. There's no extra fees or anything. So swipe that ID card. You get to go to those football games on Saturday. It's the best time with 60,000 of your closest friends or go cheer on the top 10 ranked uh, baseball team during the week or our top 25 ranked basketball team. Hey, we were the national runners up the last time there was a tournament. So we're still going to hold on to that just a little bit longer. Um, and you can see some of the other traditions on there, but I'm going to skip past that to kind of get into the admissions process. Um, our admissions process, very similar to everyone before. I appreciate Texas A&M for going into such detail about the holistic review process. It's very similar to ours. We'll see that in just a second. We, uh, we do need your application on Apply Texas or Common App starting next year. So my juniors in the room, we will also be on coalition. So one of the three is all it takes. You can apply to the university. We do have an application fee. We have a fee waiver system based off of financial needs. So reach out to your counselor for that information. We do need your transcript. So your high school transcript. If you're taking dual credit, I strongly recommend that you submit those dual credit transcripts, but it's not required high school students. And then we are officially test optional for fall 2021 this year, and then next year officially test optional. You do have to indicate on the test whether you want to be, or not on the test, on the application if you want to be test optional or not. Um, so please make sure you read through that and let you know. Um, once you go through the process with the test score, we can't remove that, but you can go through the process without the test score and go through it that. We want to make sure we do what's best for the student uh, in terms of that. So this is a very smushed together application process. Everything goes through the top, uh, the assured admissions category first. So we're going to look at, hey, the top 10 role that Texas A&M talked about. We're a public institution in Texas. We follow that as well. And then you'll see our breakdown by quarter there uh, and your SAT or ACT score needed. We super score at Texas Tech as well. So we'll, again, we'll do what benefits the student on that. If you go test optional or you do not meet the assured admissions category, we go through that holistic review. We are essay strongly recommended but optional. So essays are strongly recommended, but 
they are optional at Texas Tech. If you're going through the uh, test optional, I definitely recommend it. Um, the holistic review is very much, again, what Texas A&M said. We want to see what you've done. Everything from freshman year, day one, y'all, is fair game to put in an application. It's nice to be humble, but not in a college application. Brag, brag, brag. Put everything you've done. Here's a quick snapshot of our tuition and fees, the top two numbers you paid directly to us. This is 30 credit hours, so one full year plus living on campus, room and board. Remember board is a fancy term or old school term really for a meal plan, so that includes your meal plan on there. This is our merit-based scholarship, y'all. So this is for those students that have taken the SAT and based on your class rank. And you'll see that these are good for four years, y'all, um, as long as you meet the renewal requirements down here at the bottom. Uh, so take a look at that. You can apply to the university, be awarded a scholarship, and then you have till uh, June 1st, June 1st of your senior year to update your test scores. And we do have merit scholarships for those test optional students. And then last but not least, come visit us. There is my information, our visit stuff. Take a screenshot of that. And thank you all so much for spending your evening with us. Thank you, Texas Tech. Up next, we have Sam Houston State University. Alrighty. Hey guys, my name is Elizabeth Austin um, and I'm the Dallas and East Texas rep for Sam Houston State University. I know it's been a really long um, almost hour, so I will try and keep it short and sweet for y'all. Um, so again, Sam Houston State, we are located in Huntsville, Texas, so it's about 70 miles north of Houston. Um, geographically, I think Sam Houston State is just in a really, really cool location. We're about three hours from Dallas, about an hour, hour and a half from Houston, less than three hours to Austin, and then if you have any friends or family over at Texas A&M, we're only about 40 minutes from College Station. Um, so I did want to touch on the admissions requirements really quickly. Um, so we have a sliding scale that we go by. So it's a pretty straightforward rubric. Wherever that high school GPA falls, unweighted GPA falls, um, we need to meet the ACT or SAT score that correlates with that. So for example, if you have a 3.2, we would like a 19 on the ACT or a 1010 on the SAT. Um, we do have a test optional option for you. So um, if you have 3.0 or above, you'll be automatically accepted. Anything under a 3.0 without test scores is going to go through holistic review, as well as any um, students who do have test scores will also go through holistic review if you do not meet those minimums. So if you have a 3.2 and you only made an 18 instead of a 19 on the ACT, then you'll go through that holistic review process, um, very similar to Texas A&M, Texas Tech. Um, we will look at everything in your application. Um, we'll ask for a personal statement, and then we'll look at all four years combined of your high school transcript, any um, hardships you may have incurred, any extracurriculars, and then we will make a final admissions decision for you. So we are test optional for fall 20. One, and we just learned this week that we are test optional for fall 2022 as well for any juniors who are listening. Um, the application process is pretty straightforward. You will apply through Apply Texas. You will send us your high school transcript. You will send us test scores if you have them. And then um, your application fee or fee waiver, and that's $50 if you are not eligible for a fee waiver. Um, so once we have those four things, we are on a rolling admission. So it's only a, typically only takes about two weeks to make an admissions de decision for you once we have all of your materials. Um, so I did just wanna briefly touch on that. And then if you wanted to look into any of our um, majors and programs, you can throw it into the chat. If you had any other specific admissions questions, you can throw that into the chat as well. Um, I wanted to go over some of the fun stuff on campus. Um, so we do have 14 different residence halls on campus. Like most schools in the state, you are required to live on campus and participate in a meal plan for just your first year. Um, and then some of the dorms that we have are pretty new as well. 
Um, so again, you are required to participate in that meal plan just for your first year at least. We have two large dining halls on either side of campus. And then right in the smack dab middle of campus is our Loman Student Center that is newly renovated. Um, we have a Panda Express, Chick-fil-A, there's like a make your own pizza place. So there's some fun stuff in there. And then we have three Starbucks on campus as well. Um, so this is a brief overview of our rec sports center and some ways that you can get involved and stay fit while you are on campus. Um, so we offer club sports, intramural sports, and then we do have a rec sports center. So there's a couple different basketball courts um, and then all of your basic cardio and weightlifting equipment as well. Um, so some of our fun student activities that we have um, kind of listed over there on the side. We have um, one thing that's not listed as our Battle of the Piney Woods, which is our big rivalry football game against SFA every year. Um, and then there's just lots of ways to stay involved on campus. We have about 270 different student organizations to choose from. So um, we have faith-based organizations, fraternities and sororities, student government. We have a Quidditch team and a Pokemon Go club. So if any of that interests you. Um, and then there's always ways to kind of stay involved on campus. Um, so like I said, Huntsville itself is kind of just in our geographically really cool location. Um, but then the town of Huntsville is really small. Everything is geared towards Sam Houston State. Um, and it's really geared towards our Bearcats. So it's a really nice little college town. Um, if you have ever gone down to Houston and you see the big Sam Houston statue off of 45, there's a picture of that there. Um, campus is about five minutes north of that statue. So if that gives you any kind of idea where we are located. Um, and then those are some fun restaurants and some fun town things that are going on as well. Um, pictures of those. Um, and then if you are looking to eventually play sports or you're just a really big sports fan like myself, um, your student fees do eventually um, your student fees do pay for you to get into any of the home events for free. So we always have a really good football team. We always have a really good baseball team. We have a national championship women's bowling team. Um, so we definitely have some fun stuff going on athletics wise. Um, and then we are currently in the Southland Conference, but starting um, July 1st of 2022, we are hopping over to the Western Athletic Conference. So we're really excited for that opportunity as well. Um, and then some of our services and resources that you will have access to as a student on campus. Um, so we do have our Academic Success Center. So we have um, math tutoring and writing tutoring available for any type of math or writing on campus. Um, and then something else that's really unique is the Student Money Management Center. We were the second in the state of Texas to open a Student Money Management Center. Um, and we're currently ranked one of the top in the state. So anything that has Anything to do with money, um, our Student Money Management Center can help you with budgeting, anything like that. And then we also have our Student Health Center. So um, we do have full-time doctors on campus and full-time mental health counselors. So those are a couple of resources we hope you don't need, but are absolutely available to you if you do need them. And that is all I got. Thank you, Sam Houston State University. That concludes our program for today. Um, but I did wanna just share a couple of housekeeping closing items. So following our program today, um, you will um, see a survey on your screen, a, a short brief survey. Please respond with your feedback. Um, it's approximately four questions. You can also sign up for additional sessions. And then finally, I wanted to share that the recording will be available in about a week or so. So if you miss anything, feel free to go back and watch that recording. Again, I wanna thank you all for attending our college fair this evening. And I also wanna thank our amazing panelists. I hope everyone has a great night.